Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I want to go over a decision that a judge made to allow a case to move forward. It was a complaint that consumers were making against Apple for a defect in the 2016 and 2017 MacBook Pros. The defect is as follows. When you open the laptop, the backlight goes away. So I demonstrated this in an old video over here. It's not the best quality. You can see that there is a backlight on the screen. You can clearly make out the user icons for their accounts here and here. And then when I open the screen up a little more, you'll see that it disappears, that you cannot see any of that on the screen anymore. This is a very common problem in this year and model. And the reason that this occurs is because the display cable for the for the screen, which is soldered on to the screen that is all glued together, so this is this is a nightmare to go into fixing unless you have the capability to cut the cable, scrape off the the insulation that's on top of it, and, so, and then solder another lock cable on top of it, kind of like doing an iPad uh, iPad Mini home button replacement back in the day. This is what it looks like on the inside. So this is the 2016 and 17 model. This is the 2018 model. So you can see that in the 2018 model, as per iFixit, the cable is indeed longer, which means that Apple knew that there was a problem. There is no reason to make this cable longer in the new model unless it was too short in the old model. They did this because there was an actual problem with it. Now, many may wonder, why is this going to the point of being a court case? I mean, why don't you just go to Apple support? They fix it, right? They do for certain models. So over here, it says on support.apple.com, 13-inch MacBook Pro display backlight service program. And it says that Apple has determined a very small percentage of, small percentage, my, my balls, uh, may exhibit one of the more following behaviors. Display backlight shows vertical bars or stops working completely. Now, the eligible models here are the MacBook Pro, the A1708 model, and A1706 model from 2016, the 13-inch models. The reason there's outrage is because this design is the exact same design that was used in the A1707, the 15-inch model from 2016, which actually costs more money than the 13-inch model. So if you, if you gave Apple more money for the model that has more profit margin, that has the same design flaw, they don't help you. This also happens with the 2017 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pros. So if you have any of those machines, even though they have the exact same design defect, Apple is not covering you at all. You have to pay full price for a new screen, which is often over $500, which sucks if it's a design flaw in the product that has nothing to do with you. Now, there was a court case about this, and it's, here it says, Apple knowingly sold 2016 and 17 MacBook Pro models with FlexGate dis display defect, judge says. So it says over here, two years later, a judge who's presiding over the case from a group of consumers is accusing Apple of knowingly selling the laptops despite the defect, saying that Apple would have been alerted to the issue thanks to pre-release testing. A report reported in a paywall report from Law360, Judge Edward Davila, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, sided with the plaintiffs by agreeing that testing the laptops before the release would have informed Apple engineers of the issue. Hence, the company knowingly sold the laptops with the defect. U.S. District Judge Edward Davila determined that the consumers' allegations of Apple conducting in intensive pre-release testing, which the consumers say was conducted by a team of reliability engineers who carried out stress tests and other procedures that would have alerted Apple to defects behind the display failures, sufficiently demonstrate that Apple was aware of the alleged defect. The court finds that the allegations of pre-release testing in combination with the allegations of substantial consumer complaints are sufficient to show that Apple had exclusive knowledge of the alleged defect, the judge wrote in his opinion. The plaintiff, Mahan Telespor, I apologize if I butchered your name, representing a large group of consumers, says that Apple continues to deny that there was ever a defect in its display cables, and goes further to say that Apple attempted to cover up any evidence of Flexgate. According to Telespor, Apple deliberately deleted comments and threads from its Apple support community forum, which often serves as a go-to place for crowdsourcing information on potential issues with Apple devices. Talispor accuses Apple of deleting comments that outline Flexgate and the issues around the display. The judge says that if the accusation is true, it will act as further proof that Apple was aware of the issue. If Apple deleted comments on its website from consumers complaining about display issues attributable to the alleged defect, that suggests that Apple had knowledge of the alleged defect superior to that of the plaintiffs or potential class members. Apple is pushing back, saying that Talispor bought his MacBook Pro in 2017 and used it without any issues for more than three years until the case was filed. Of course, if your computer is not supposed to last more than three years. Ha ha. Apple also says that the allegation is based on false assumptions, not hot iron facts. Really, motherfucker? So when you go over here and you look at a 2016-17 machine and the cable is shorter than in 2018, that's not a hard iron fact that you're able to fucking measure with a ruler. You can't measure that with a ruler. It's not a fact. Ignore it.
My dick is the same size as Ron Jeremy's. Ignore what the ruler says. Like, this, who comes up with this? Specifically, Apple says that the idea that pre-release testing of the device would have alerted it to the issue is not accurate. Alexander Wheeler, an attorney for the case, says that plaintiffs are naturally pleased with the judge's current stance on the issue and their decision to allow the case to move forward. Wheeler goes on to state that the specifics of Flexgate, those thin cables stretch and wear out as consumers open and close their laptops. As those thin cables tear, the display screen, which Apple touts as the best Mac display ever, stop working long before the expected life of an expensive Apple laptop. With the release of the 2018 MacBook Pro, Apple addressed the issue by adding a longer cable. So there's a few things to go over in this article. The first thing that I want to go over before I get to anything else is the manufactured rift between users of Apple products and myself in this channel. What I advocate for are typically two things. A, that when the manufacturer makes a mistake, when they screw up, and that screw up results in your product not working properly, that the manufacturer take accountability and responsibility for it. That means that if you go to Apple with this issue and you're 10 days out of warranty, that they fix it for free. They screwed up. They know they screwed up. It is demonstrable when you look at the fact that they have a, re a recall program over here, a warranty program for one of these machines. They know that they screwed up and they know what they did wrong because they corrected it, that they replace it for free for you, the Apple user. What I'm advocating for here, when I point out these design defects that Apple claims doesn't exist, is that you be able to get your product fixed, not by me for profit, for free by the manufacturer, because I believe if you spend three or four or $5,000 on a top-of-the-line device and it has an issue that doesn't pop up in a $300 Acer, that it's on them to fix it. Secondly, what I advocate for is that for out-of-warranty products that you break, that they not go out of their way to artificially uh, suppress the market so that I'm not able to purchase what I need in order to fix a product for you. If you have a product you want to be fixed, Apple says $1,500, the chip is $5, that you have the option to go to me, that they not tell the company that makes that chip, don't sell it to anybody else. I believe that these two things that I advocate for, regardless of the fact that I don't use or like Apple products, would be beneficial for Apple users. Yet, there is this uh, there is this manufactured rift where people will say, this guy is an asshole, he hates on Apple, and what people try to do is pretend that I hate the actual user of the product, that I'm one of those people that yells, LOL, MacFag, in the comment section of 4chan or whatever, that I hate you for what you use. That couldn't be further from the truth. I don't care what you use. I am not bothered by people who use Apple products. What I am bothered by is the way that the company treats their customers. I'm bothered that they will gaslight you and say that this has nothing to do in fact when A, they have already released a recall program because they know they screwed up, and B, they corrected what they did wrong and you can demonstrate it with a fucking ruler as clear as you can demonstrate that my dick is not the size of Ron Jeremy's with a ruler. This is what bothers me. And if I got what I wanted in both of those two cases, if I got what I advocated for, I believe that the lives and the wallets of the users of Apple products would be better. That the people who utilize Apple products, who like Apple products, who want to use them into the future, who like their design, who like their features, who like their operating system, who like everything about them, would not be hurt in any way, shape, or form by me getting what I advocate for on this channel. If they make a machine where the board does this inside the case, that I, what I advocate for is that A, they cover it for you rather than claiming that you did it on your own, and B, that they actually resolder the chip properly rather than put a piece of shoe rubber there and call it a day. This is an interesting one, though, because it also ties in to what Jessa Jones says on iPad Rehab about the Apple Community Support Forum, where they will delete factual information. They often delete factual information on their forum, and it can be incredibly aggravating. This is something that I've gone over in some of my videos on this, ch on this channel. One of them, I believe, had the thumbnail. I forget the title of it. The thumbnail was something like, do your effing job. And uh, there is one over here where Jessa corrects corrected incorrect information on an Apple repair forum, and she was banned for it. So for instance, there are certain times where they say you cannot recover data. And if anybody says they can recover data, they are lying to you. Their moderators say that. And when Jessa says, that's not true, I actually recovered data for someone and I'm in literally in the news for recovering data from someone who is now a widow as a result of a hate crime, and I got all their stuff from a phone that was covered in blood, that they will delete these posts. Moderators of that forum will delete truthful posts when you say something like, hey, maybe you should take a toothpick and use it to remove the lint from your charge port because Apple does not replace charge ports. They don't replace charge ports. Even if you go to an Apple authorized service provider or an IRP, 
or an AASP of the store, if you have lint in your charge port, they will not clean it and they will not replace a charge port. It's not listed as a serviceable part, even though it is on a flex cable and not something you solder on. If she posts that on there, they will delete it. So what I find interesting here is that a court case against Apple that is going to cost them a lot of money is going to cost them a lot of money and is going to move forward specifically because there is evidence of them deleting posts on their forum. Their censorship of truth on their forum is directly going to lead to them losing money, which I think honestly is karma. And maybe in the future, this will lead to this uh, stopping. So this is another one that Jessa did where there's a few videos that Jessa did. Uh, of you, you could find it on iPad Rehab on her channel where she goes over her multiple bans from the Apple community support forum for posting the truth. And again, people posted the truth. They said, hey, when my machine does this, when I open it, the backlight goes off and they were deleting the posts. Now, if they were deleting the posts, that means that someone was reading the post. If someone was reading the post, that means that they were aware that it's an issue. And if they were aware that it was an issue, but they're claiming they weren't aware that it's an issue and that there's not, no reason to do anything about it, that is in conflict with itself. So this, this seems like karma. And I'm happy to see this case go forward. And I genuinely hope that every single person that got one of those A1706, A1707, or A1708 model MacBook Pros is able to get a free at no charge repair from the manufacturer. We purchased these cables, so I am able to do this repair here. Uh, we, we finally were able to get the actual flex cables rather than do the, the crappy thing, which is the you know whole soldering individual flex cables there. But at the end of the day, we should not have to do this because Apple should be covering this. It is their own design defect and flaw. It is not because of normal wear and tear. This is not normal wear and tear. You're not supposed to make a cable that is so short that as you open and close the device, the cable is being worn out and destroyed by rubbing against the metal casing when you could have just made it mildly longer, but you didn't. And let's not even get into the issue where the 52 volt power line for the LCD backlight is right next to the pin, like no, not even one pin away from the 1.7 volt data line that goes straight to the CPU that kills it if you're in a humid room. I believe that the manufacturer should have to take responsibility if they produce a product that has these types of obvious design flaws. And I hold myself to the very same standard. There are times when we had purchased parts from a distributor that did not do the best of jobs. And what we did is I walked over to every employee and I said, anybody who has come in over the past three weeks for this repair, if you look them up and they say they have a problem with it, no questions asked, just replace it. Don't charge them, apologize, put it in front of the other repairs, just do it for them. We're not perfect. We are going to screw up. I have screwed up in the past. I will likely screw up into the future. What you do when you screw up is you take accountability and responsibility for it. And if you are not going to take accountability and responsibility for it, at least be consistent and get this crap off your website because it makes absolutely no sense to claim that the 2016 model has a problem that the 2017 model doesn't have when they are designed the exact same way. And so for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I will see you all in the next video. And again, at the end of the day, if you love Apple products, if you read r slash Apple, if you're a member of r slash Apple, if you enjoy using your MacBook, your iPad, your iPhone, your watch, all of these things, and you intend to continue buying them into the future, I am not your enemy. Everything that I advocate for here is that A, the company allow us to be able to do repairs so that if you want data recovery someday, if you want to repair, maybe you're short on money and you're not able to get it through the manufacturer, your Apple Care ran out, that you have a choice to use anybody to do the repair. But above all, B, that when these types of design defects come out, that you be able to get a free repair. I don't believe that you should have to pay five or six or seven or $800 to fix something one day outside of the one year warranty when the manufacturer knows that they designed the product with a defect. You may not like me. You may think I'm an asshole. You may think I'm bombastic. You may think I'm a jackass. You may think it's weird that I have this little yellow duck that represents Eli the computer guy sitting on top of a bin of peanuts over here. But at the end of the day, what I advocate for are policies that would benefit anybody that uses an Apple product. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.